Hi, welcome. For those of you who are not familiar with me and my practice, my name is Megan Warren and I'm a certified coach specializing in emotional resilience. If you don't know what emotional resilience is, you're not alone. Essentially, it's understanding who you are at the core and learning how to take that, your core values, your wants, your, your needs into a situation and create an outcome that works not only for you and honors yourself, but also works for other people. Now they say that life gives you what you most need to learn. And as I scored under the national average for emotional resilience in the beginning, let's just say that understanding the journey, the before as well as the after, is part of what helps me see through my clients' struggles to their strength and their ability to create that stability, that emotional stability for themselves. Now, in addition to being an emotional resilience coach, I'm also an expat single mom, and my background is in business development and public health. I'm gonna be making videos, and you may have already seen some of the ones I put out, but they're designed to help you navigate the sticky challenges that you encounter in life. So if they're of use, subscribe to my channel to stay updated. Now, today we're gonna to be looking at a topic that I am currently exploring with at least three of my clients. How do you survive micromanagement? You are hired because of your skill set. You have proven your dedication time after time. In fact, you define overtime as a regular day and night at work. And yet your manager continues to add to that workload with inane requests for details and information that are leagues below their level. Every time you see their name in your inbox, your jaw clenches. Your shoulders hunch and you sink in your chair when they walk in. Does that sound familiar? I mean, it takes you as much time to provide them with the details and help them understand every step of the complicated algorithm that you put together, you know, that you created to support the project, the document, the system, the estimate. I mean, the list is endless, right? It goes on and includes everything under the sun. But it takes you an incredible amount of time, as much time as you put on the project, to help them understanding the hows and whys of what you did. And you're managing the project well, it's on track. You've planned for the challenges that you foresee and you've set updates on the deliverables. So why, 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 why are they asking for specifics on such a tiny element? Is, is your boss asking because she doesn't trust you? Is he asking because he doesn't think you did it correctly? You start to pan your mind looking for proof that you've shown that you're not trustworthy or maybe there's evidence of a mistake but you don't really find anything, nothing comes to light. And then that only increases your sense of injustice and the frustration that you feel every time you encounter your boss. So for anyone who is sort of nodding along or shaking your head in amazement, you didn't know that I knew your boss, right? Well, the topic today is for you. It is possible to work for a micromanager and thrive. You can navigate a path forward that allows you to find your independence and your satisfaction. And we're gonna take a look at how you can accomplish the seemingly impossible. Now, there are a few circumstances where this might be achieved simply by managing up a bit, being a bit more proactive with your boss. So where you have a good relationship you know, outside of the micromanagement and your boss is open to feedback, then Communicating the effect that the micromanagement has on you and proposing a structure that helps them access what they need, but in a way that reduces the burden or the unexpectedness of the request on you, well, that might be a useful step. However, much of the time, micromanagement stems from the manager's need for control. And when this is the case, managing up really is not the most effective option because the manager isn't open to collaboratively designing a system that fulfills your needs as well as theirs. So often 
their primary concern in this case is informa information gathering because having massive amounts of data at their fingertips, well, that helps them feel prepared and in control. Now, at times, proactively feeding them massive amounts of information, well, that only feeds the demon that demands data to maintain the high. So where the micromanager is not open to understanding the impact of their requests or willing to adhere to a system that, you know, something that you've proposed. Well, it's likely that they feel the need to command power over others and over situations. Brene Brown has a great podcast. And in this podcast, she differentiates leaders who leverage power, power over from leaders who, who convey power to, power within, and power with. And micromanagers are leaders who use power over others and over situations to feel as if they are in control of external realities. And it's understanding this need for control that's going to help you navigate a relationship in such a way that it empowers you to thrive under the micromanager. Now, if you listen to my earlier video on what to do when you can't change someone, well, then you're already going to know that spinning circles in your mind about how to get them to change or trying to use your behavior to create change. Well, that's ineffective at best. And at worst, it drives you mad. It's going to drive you to drink. <laughs> so instead of focusing on how they should and how they need to change, maybe asking yourself, what is it in their life that made this behavior the best choice for them right now? Maybe that's what will help you empathize and step through to see their worldview. Now, <laughs> I want to take a minute to underscore that this is not to suggest that you change your mind. It is not to suggest that you disregard your feelings or change your opinion. Using empathy to understand their perspective simply allows you to understand the why behind the what. And having that understanding, well, it gives you insight into their motivations. And then you can use that knowledge to position your approach. So, for example, if you understand what is driving their requests, it might make it easier to creatively meet that need. So even though they might be unaware of it or unable to express it, and it taxes your patience and demands your time, you could creatively think of a way to meet that, that that helps you. You know, additionally, understanding their needs and seeing them in 3D, right? So not only as your manager, but also as a, as a mother, a brother, a child, with all of the worries and the you know, they got in the same fights and they have aches and pains when they wake up that you do. It might help you become a little bit less sensitive to their unceasing requests for things. The essential goal of empathy is really just to help you detach from the frustrations and the irritations in the moment. And seeing your boss as a person with fears and challenges just like yours can help you step back from the turmoil that each request unleashes. So to step back even further from this turmoil, you can ask yourself how your interpretation of the situation, you know, that story that starts rolling through your head the minute that you see that email, how is that helping or hindering your ability to control or to, to control yourself to cope with the micromanagement? To do this, you can start with your body. It's the easiest part to check. When you see that email or you hear their voice in, in your ear, notice if your shoulders are tense. Notice if you're holding your breath. That's where we store a lot of our tension. And after you scan your body, check in with your thoughts. Is the story that you're telling yourself, well, is it about you? Is it about how your boss doesn't trust you? How she doesn't think that you're doing a good job? If the story in your head has anything to do with how you are not enough, check the story. Do you, 
Do you actually have the evidence that your boss thinks you're doing a poor job? Do you have a performance review you can point to? Do you have a conversation or an email where this was explicitly stated? If not, then likely the feeling that you have is about the story that you're telling yourself in the moment. It's based on a feeling rather than facts. And if you're not basing the story on facts and evidence, then take a moment to pause and to breathe. Because their request for control, it's not about you. It's about your boss. At the point where you can realize that the request isn't about you, it's not about the fact that you're not enough, it's about their need for control, well, that puts you in the driver's seat. Now, you can choose to stick with the story, which questions your value, it questions your efficacy, or you can choose to tell yourself another story, a story that serves you. If you choose to continue the story that depicts you as not capable, not qualified, you don't have any skills, how does that reduce your level of frustration? How does it help you acknowledge and validate your competencies? And if it's the not good enough gremlin that's driving the car and you're continually trying to please your micromanager at the cost of yourself, well, I think you will quickly realize that you cannot fill that control bucket unless you magically have the universe by the horns. <laughs> so the more logical option, or at least an option that doesn't require magic, is stepping outside of the situation and using empathy and the power of focus to leverage your perception of the situation to step back from the storyline that you are running in your head. Ultimately, micromanagers are going to they're going to struggle greatly in this coming year, right? Because the future remains uncertain, risks and outcomes are becoming even more unpredictable, and the long-term effects of the pandemic are only getting exacerbated now. So ask your gremlin why staying on a runaway train, it's a fruitless task to try and fill the black hole of their need for control, and it causes you to doubt your skills. So ask your gremlin why that's your best option. Detaching from the story in your head and using empathy to better understand why micromanagement might be the best choice for your boss in this moment, well, it allows you to set, hold, and also communicate boundaries that protect your sanity and self-worth. Thank you for listening today. As with my other articles and videos, I encourage you to find one practical way to to implement empathy. And the next time you have a run-in with your micromanager, how does that empathy impact your emotions in the exchange? How does changing the storyline in your head influence your ability to communicate what you need and set boundaries that protect that? If you'd like to learn how to develop a new storyline, how to set and hold boundaries, contact me on my website www.meganwarrencoaching.com and you can click on contact and use the link to, to schedule a free discovery call with me. Be well.